A couple of weeks back, I was finishing up an article for the blog, link in the description. And as a result, I was browsing through a variety of different low cost field watches. For the most part, it was the typical brands you'd expect. There was loads of Timex watches, some Seikos, and then a few random generic Chinese ones. Many watches that you've probably heard of and seen before. But then in the recommended section on Amazon, I saw this very highly reviewed Loris watch. I've never tried this brand before. The watch looked pretty good. Not to mention it was under 40 pounds and had specifications that just smashed the competition, especially at such a low price point. These included mineral glass, which isn't exactly unexpected, but also a titanium case and then 100 meters of water resistance. As such, I couldn't resist. I had to buy it to try it. Let's see if it's a good watch or if the specs are a bit deceiving. And while I haven't tried this brand before, it is one that I'm familiar with. Alongside another brand that you may have heard of, Pulsar, Loris is one of these Seiko subsidiary brands. Excuse the pronunciation as well. Loris, Loris, Lorus, God knows. But essentially, these are just Seiko watches with a different stamp on them. They launched Loris in 1982, presenting it as more of a fashion-oriented brand as opposed to the more traditional Seiko. And they especially focus on these lower end price brackets. As such, I'm surprised that I haven't covered them before given the type of things I cover on this channel. But either way, what came through the post? The watch arrived in just a very simple white box with just Loris whacked onto the top. Overall though, it's fine. The watch arrived in great condition. Aesthetically, this is a fairly classic field watch. You have the matte case with a really simple design overall and small crown guards. You'll notice the watch is fairly diminutive in size, which we'll talk about in a moment. The cream dial has everything you'd expect. It's got bold numbers at each hour with their 24 hour equivalents closer to the center. Even the hand choice is unsurprising with the syringe hands being a common feature of other field watches out there. So really it's nothing revolutionary, but I think it looks really good. This one does have some tiny circular engravings every 90 degrees, make of that what you will. I really don't notice them. One thing I did notice though is that this watch looks way better in person than the rubbish product shots online. They definitely don't do justice to how the watch actually appears, so it's a shame. Something to note as well about the appearance is that there is another Loris field watch that looks really similar to this one. The RX F41 AX7, bit of a mouthful, that one uh, does feature very good water resistance, but it comes with a slightly different case construction. That one I believe is constructed of stainless steel, though is listed in some places as resin. If you want this titanium one, which I definitely recommend, I'll link to this specific one in the description. When I first put this on my wrist, there was something that struck me straight away. Man oh man, is this a comfortable watch. It just sits there so well. The only thing I can think of comparing it to is the Casio F91W. That watch is super comfortable. This one might even be more so. Most of that is down to the case material. This watch is constructed of titanium, which is an interesting choice to say the least. Titanium is hypoallergenic, but importantly, it's only a fraction of the weight of the typical stainless steel that's used in most wristwatches. It's hard to put a figure on it because it varies from watch to watch. However, what I can say is you will notice it straight away. If you've not tried one of these before, it feels like you've got a feather on your wrist. To the extent that because it's so lightweight and comfortable, I often forget that it's there, which is a great feeling that I rarely get. It's not light where it feels cheap or tinny though. I think it's perhaps the, the texture of the metal that alleviates that. Another big plus is that this watch doesn't make my wrist clammy. With loads of watches, and I'm sure you will have experienced this too, after you take them off, you'll be left with like a little sweaty bit underneath where they were sitting. This titanium case just seems far less susceptible to heat and I've not had that problem once. It just seems to stay at a nice consistent temperature. It's also to be noted that these cases are corrosion resistant and tend to last a really long time. Traditionally, the trade-off that you'd have with this sort of material is that they would scratch quite easily, especially some of the earlier titanium models that were introduced around 50 years ago now. Nowadays though, materials used by brands like Seiko, AKA the people who made this watch, they've been developed to perform far better against scratches, often even better than stainless steel. So for the most part, I think this is a great material to use. Though, if you like the feel, 
of a weightier watch, obviously this isn't going to be the way to go for you. But for a quartz field watch that you're going to be using out and about, it's perfect. As I touched on before, this is quite a small watch as might be expected given its intended purpose. This comes in at 36mm in diameter, excluding the crown, with a depth of just over 8mm, so it's quite thin too. Paired with a lug to lug size of 43.3mm, it's a great size for medium or skinny wrists. This looks right at home on my 6.25 inch wrist, but if you've got significantly larger wrist, it might look a bit swamped. It's certainly not a flashy watch. This is one that is just meant to sit there and be pretty durable whilst looking like a field watch. And I think the smaller size matches that purpose really well. The crown has a good amount of protection, which is useful if you plan on taking this on your actual adventures in the wilderness. Overall, it has a solid level of grip and works well, though is on the small side. I like the way that this interacts with the movement as you can feel a slight click as you cycle through each date option. That tactile feel just makes it nice and easy. As previously mentioned, this comes with a really surprising 100 meters of water resistance. This comes by way of a notched case back and should be suitable for submersion and even swimming. I think that's all you can ask for in a field watch, it's not even a dive watch. And notably, it is more than the competition in this price range. Similar Timex and Seiko watches below £100 have either 30 meters or 50 meters. So this is just a great practical upgrade. Following this, the dial is covered by a flat piece of mineral crystal. I think this is fine for less than £40. Many other really cheap watches just have a flat piece of acrylic instead, whereas this should offer a better balance between your scratch resistance and impact resistance. Powering this watch is a Seiko VX42 quartz movement. It's my first time reviewing a watch with this movement inside, as far as I can recall, and I'm impressed. This has been hitting the second markers near perfectly since opening the box. The second hand seems to have very little bounce to it as well, which, while it won't necessarily add to the watch's accuracy, it just looks better. Loads of the Miyota movements I've covered recently have had problems with regards to this. They look like they're jumping around on a pogo stick, they've got that much back play, but not on this one. I think that's extra important when you've got that slim syringe second hand, as you'd really notice if that started missing the markers. While this watch definitely isn't super loud, it isn't perfectly quiet. I'd say it's maybe a third or half the volume of like a Timex Weekender. But even then, I've been able to sleep with this on my bedside and, and not be bothered by it. So I'll definitely keep my eyes up for these movements in the future. The default strap included with this watch is made of canvas. The green color does go with that military theme overall. Once more, it's probably a bit better than I imagined. While the quality isn't top tier, it does have extra reinforcement around the holes for added durability, and overall feels okay. I think for a strap on a £40 watch, you can't ask for much more than this. If you wanted a really solid strap, you might be expected to pay more than the whole of this watch anyway. Nevertheless, if you wanted to change this, you will need a tool because it doesn't have any tabs or anything like that. So I, I've praised this watch a lot in this video. I really like it, but it's not perfect. I don't think any watch is. In this case, there are a couple of little niggles. Firstly, that glass does stand a fraction proud of the bezel. Unless you're incredibly unlucky, I doubt you'd ever catch it on anything. It's maybe like half a millimeter at most. However, if it was just sat flush to the bezel, I think it'd be better. Additionally, the dial is pretty plain, really. It lacks any sort of texture or depth, but for 40 quid, I don't know what I'm complaining about. <laughs> At the 40 pound price point, there isn't any other option that does it better. So really, considering I haven't heard of this watch before, it's kind of surprising, but I think this is the best cheap field watch out there. This is just an objectively better watch when compared with similarly designed Timex Expedition or Weekender watches. And you could argue it's a better option than the Seiko SNK field watches too. Those do have a mechanical movement, but a bit chunkier, they're heavier because of the movement inside, and they also have substantially worse water resistance than this beauty. Plus, they're almost double the cost. Rather unexpectedly, I didn't think I'd be the type of person that would want to wear a field watch, but since receiving this, I can't take it off. This is definitely the easiest recommendation I've made on this YouTube channel so far. If you don't like the, the look of field watches, I get it. But if you do, and you want a great field watch for barely any money, make it this one. I'll link this at its current price in the video description. But the real question is, what do you think? On today's Wall of Watches, in the last episode we had a double vote on two watches that we'd previously looked at, the Pagani Design Chronograph 
and the Junkers 100 Years Bauhaus. The Pagani design, people appreciated it for what it was. From the votes in the iCard and in the comments, this was clearly going in the cool section. And the Junkers was kind of split. I thought that watch might go down better than it did, at least in the comments section, because there was a lot of divisiveness. Some people loved the look, other people hated it. I think maybe because it's not, not a Seiko, or it's not the specifications. But then the iCard was a blowout, people saying it was amazing. So overall, I'm gonna say this one is just about in the cool section. But I wanna know where you put this Loris watch. Is this low quality Chinese garbage? Uncool, cool, or ice cold? Let me know in the comments and in the iCard above. Subscribe for more watch videos. See you in the next one.